Hi, shalom friends. I had this brilliant idea I want to share with you. Perhaps we could make a, a, in America a day dedicated n not to murder. Celebrating not murdering. Oh, I could sort of envision your response. Not very brilliant at all. Okay, well, how about a day special dedicated not to be unfaithful? Well, again, I don't see much uh, response. So tell me, why do we have a day called Mother's Day? Isn't that one of the Ten Commandments? The other two that I mentioned as well are Ten Commandments. So if God tells us to respect and honor Mother, why do we have a day for it? Well, I don't really have an answer, but I'm not against Mother's Day because anything that's good um, is worthwhile to spend some time on it. Mothers are good. Motherhood is a blessing. And uh, we should certainly acknowledge it. But from a Jewish perspective, to have one day a year mother uh, dedicated to the mother is, is a little bit perhaps uh, off the straight path. Okay, why do I bring this in? If there were to be a Jewish Mother's Day, which one of the four mothers of Israel would you choose? Would you choose Sarah? Would it be Rivka, or Rachel, Rachel, or Leah? And it would seem from the Jewish heart and soul, no, they never were in the running. Each and every one of them is a mother of Israel. And we bless our daughters, may you be like Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. And yet, I'll say it in Yiddish, because there's no better way to say it. Mama Rachel. Our mother, Rachel, seems to be universally acknowledged as the mother of Israel. And of course, her resting place in Beis Lechem in Israel is a Mecca. And people talk to uh, Mama Rachel, they talk and they, when they pray by her resting place, they actually relate to her very much like a mother. Not only as a patriarch and as a matriarch and as a, a very incredibly holy, sublime spiritual soul on earth, but really very much on, on a very human level. I'm going to my mother to ask her to put in a good word in heaven for me and so on. So I want to speak for a moment. What makes Rachel, Mama Rachel, so endearing to all of Israel that she becomes the mother figure? All of us have the utmost respect and admiration, and indeed we study constantly the life of Sarah, Rivka, and Leah. Yet it's Mama Rachel, it's our mother Rachel. So perhaps I, uh, I'll share with you a possible, a possible reason. We know that Rachel is only one of the mothers of Israel that's not buried in Hebron, which is the Ma'ara Samachpela, where Abraham lies with Sarah, Isaac with Rebekah, and Jacob with Leah. But Rachel is on the path. Actually, the Chumash itself, the Bible itself, tells a story that when Jacob uh, asked his son, Joseph, who's the viceroy of, of Egypt, to make sure that he's buried in Israel, he sort of explains why he did not do the same for his mother. When he was uh, coming into Israel, R Rachel or Rachel died, and I bur buried her on the way. Why? I had a very good reason for this. And the Midrash and the Talmud explains that when the Jewish people were exiled from their land, when the first temple was destroyed, and the wicked Nebuchadnezzar brought them to Babylon, they went, they were on the path from Israel leading to Babylon. This was from home to exile. They would pass the resting place or the burial place of Rachel. And they would run and they would say, Rachel, Rachel, our mother, please pray to Hashem that he should watch over us. Look what's happening to your children. They're being exiled, they're being kicked out of their, their land and their home. And Rachel goes before God and prays for her children. And as we're, we're assured, God says to Rachel, uh, you should be comforted because I will bring them back. In other words, your prayers have been heard. Now, let's, let's try to analyze this just a tiny bit. The story takes place a thousand years, approximately a thousand years after Rachel is buried. That means uh, basically for a thousand years, she was out of um, 
the family burial plot, and she was there for a reason, because one time her children will need her, and she wanted to be there for them. And Jacob, knowing Rachel's personality and temperament, decided to put his beloved wife in a place which for essentially almost a thousand years was not well publicized. People knew about it, but it was not well publicized because he knew that Mama Rachel, a mother, cares about her children and will often uh, sacrifice her own comfort for her children. So now we have a better inkling about Rachel. But if you go even deeper, we find something very amazing. We know when you read the biblical story, Rachel did not have any children for a long time. It, instead, there was a Leah who had six children, right? And two other wives actually that had children before Rachel had her child. When you actually think about it, Rachel's children were Joseph, who turns into Menashe and Ephraim, and in Jewish history, and I won't go into it right now, the ten tribes were in the, in, in the empire of Ephraim. And they actually were exiled a hundred years before the story of, of the Babylonian exile. So the children of Israel that are passing by Mother Rachel are not really her children. They're actually the children of, of Leah and of the other wives. And yet Rachel makes no distinction. She prays to Hashem. She says, my children are going into exile. Almighty God, how can you just overlook and make yourself indifferent to their cries? And of course Hashem says, you're right. I won't make myself indifferent. So here we have a second insight. A Yiddish mama, a Jewish mother, is not only a mother who's willing to sacrifice her comfort and security for her children, but it doesn't even have to be her children. They just have to be a Yiddish kind. All they have to be is a Jewish child. And even if they're not of the same um, flesh and blood, so to speak, because it's not from her, but it's from her sister, it's all the same to a Yiddish mama. You know, in, in the stereotype and the caricature of the Jewish mother who dominates her children and lives their life for them, I mean, it's false, but there's a touch of truth, not in the way they depict it, but in, in explaining her concern. A Jewish mother truly cares about her children, truly earnestly cares about them, their physical well-being, their spiritual well-being, and even their, 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 their well-being in the future. So indeed, Mama Rachel, our mother Rachel, deserves that title of Mother of Israel, and if there ever was a Mother's Day, it should certainly be to honor the, the image and the personality of Rachel. Those of us that are privileged to have presently mothers, and all of us, without exception, had a mother, should perhaps think a little bit about the blessing that was bestowed upon mankind by Hashem creating a Yiddish mother. And perhaps there would be nothing more to bring more nachas to a Yiddish mother than to see her children acting in a similar way, to care and to be concerned not only about their children, but about all of God's children, especially God's Jewish children, in addition to which to be willing and able to sacrifice or to hold back a bit of someone's personal enjoyment for the sake of many. Shalom and happy Mother's Day.